With 140, most of my energy is focused on the outward facing stuff, the outreach, speaking, listening, seeing what's going on in the industry, seeing what people actually need, um, and having relationships. We basically serve three corners of a triangle. We're right in the middle of the social business emerging market, and so we're helping brands who have budget and are trying to understand what to spend it on. We're helping tools companies who have these great services and are trying to understand how to reach out to agencies and to brands. And we're serving the agencies and consultants themselves in terms of here's a great place to show off your expertise, your case studies, how to find the right tools, and how to explain them to brands. So just pulling all three of those relationships together and helping everybody figure out this exploding marketplace, um, it's a lot of fun. You know, I think everybody says, you know, the colleges, obviously you have a lot of different students coming through here, you have some of the world's leading intellectuals. Um, and I think also the fact that we get together a lot, right? Because you're, you're stuck indoors, you're not outside, you're not running around. Um, so there's a lot of time for events and symposiums and. It's, it's a really cool place to be working. Well, in general, I mean, obviously we're in social business, so that's really important to me. There's a lot of that happening here. We're really on a world class with, um, especially marketing thinkers. You have David Mirman Scott in this area, Chris Brogan in this area. Um, and what's really powering that is its ability to connect people to one another. I often point out that connecting to a brand on social is powerful for the brand, but even more powerful is for the brand to connect its audience to each other. Because if you make friends or start to get to know other people who are passionate about the company, that's a lot stickier than just bonding with the company. So Sam Adams is the first brand that comes to mind when I think about Boston, which probably says a lot about me and loving beer. Um, the Red Sox, and I think the colleges and museums. I grew up in Connecticut, and just whenever I thought of Boston, that was where the Red Sox were and all these great places to visit. I think a really important step that people often overlook is to get really, really clear on what you are passionate about enough that you will never quit at it. And that will drive pretty much the rest of your career, right? If you are clear that the work you're doing is something there's no other way for you to not do, that's going to get you through a lot of obstacles, a lot of frustrations, and it also seems to be very engaging for mentors. They see someone who really, really wants to be fired up about something, and that's much more enjoyable for them to reach out and help them get there. The form of marketing that obviously means the most for us because we started as Twitter's app store, and even though we're a much broader social media business now, um, blogging, Twitter, incredibly compelling for us. It lets us get the ideas and information out there and then people come and find us. We had a blog post run today where you know some of the world's experts on PR heard about it and restated it on their own Twitter accounts because they were excited. I never could have gotten that done by calling all those people and begging for them to tweet us. So just genuinely putting good stuff out there, whether it be our Facebook page, our LinkedIn group, our blog, or our Twitter account is just working phenomenally. You know, it's funny, you asked about a turning point in, in starting 140, and I would say the most pivotal moment for me, uh, no pun intended, because Pivotal Labs helped build the initial software, was in March 2009 when I gave up. That was really when I did quit after four months of talking about different ways to get it done. And yet I woke up the next morning and I still had this fire to go figure this out. So I hopped on a plane to go to South by Southwest and just start begging for angel money. 140 is truly a labor of thousands. So many people have reached out to me and helped me out. Um, locally, the CEO of Blue Leaf, John Prendergast, has been an incredibly helpful mentor. Katie Ray, who's now running the Techstars program, is actually my CEO coach, and I think I call her three times a day sometimes. Uh, just incredibly powerful and helpful. Chris Guy Kawasaki helped me get started in all of this by relaying what I had convinced him about Twitter for Business way back in August 2007, if you can believe that it was that long ago. Um, I, I would have to thank thousands, really. I am reading Undaunted Courage, which is the story of the Lewis and Clark expedition. It was given to me by a VC at General Catalyst when I asked him for tips on the best business book to read if you don't have a business, you know, I have no business experience before doing this. So I thought it was pretty funny that he cited an adventure and travel book. And the further I get into it, the more I realize why, both the startup and the book. And they just kept running into walls. They kept having disastrous things. Sacagawea came back to camp almost dying of a fever. 
and they're like, great, if she dies, we no longer have somebody to help us get along with the natives and the whole expedition could be toast. So let's drop everything and fix this problem. I think you're going to see it really go mainstream for the first time. I mean, Facebook is definitely out there in mainstream um, and has been working really well for some businesses. I think businesses are starting to understand Twitter and I think uh, one of the things Twitter itself missed was it didn't do enough for the ordinary person. When you go to YouTube, it's very easy to sit there and just view videos. When you go to Twitter.com, it's really not that straightforward what you're supposed to do. I mean, think of it this way. If you had to go to YouTube and become a video publisher to get any value out of it, it, it never would have taken off, right? And it is very true that enough content, context, critical mass, great graphics, great articles are flowing through Twitter all the time. There's just not enough read-only experiences yet, and we see that growing. 